Welcome to West Virginia, and I brought my darling daughter, Ellie, to help me out with Joke of the Day because she delivers jokes way better than I do. Are you ready, Ellie? I am. Okay, okay. I'm ready. Let's do this. What do you call people who are hard of hearing? Huh? What? I said, what do you call people that are hard of hearing? <laughs> <laughs> Which is totally me. Nicely done, Ellie. Thank Beautiful job. Get out of here, kid. You're stealing my thunder. I'm out. You're stealing my stage. Okay. So, now that we've established I can't hear, let's take a look at what I can do, and I can teach you how to factor trinomials. Now, remember, I've told you guys that when it comes to factoring trinomials, you always, 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 Look first to see if there's a common monomial that you can divide out of every single term before you do anything else. After you've divided out that, that common monomial, then you can head into that double parentheses concept, but not until you've divided out that common monomial. So let's take a look at these examples. Notice I've got a 3x squared, a 21x, and a 36. I'm going to look at each of those coefficients, 3, 21, and 36, and I'm going to say, is there a number that I can divide out of all those? Yes, in fact, there is. I can divide a 3 out of every one of those terms. Now, notice I can divide x's out of here and here, but not here, so I'm not going to divide any x's out. And I'm going to write down in a parenthesis what's left once I do that division. So when I divide this by 3x squared, or sorry, by 3, I'm left with an x squared. When I divide this by 3, I'm left with 7x. And when I divide this by 3, I'm left with 12. Now I am ready to have for that double parentheses. So I'm going to take what's inside this parentheses. Now first I'm going to say, is there anything more that I can divide out of each one of those, that common monomial factoring, just to make sure that I've divided everything out that I possibly can. And no, I can't take any x's out of here. And as far as the coefficients goes, there's nothing more I can divide out. So I'm headed for that double parentheses. Now recall with the double parentheses, I'm going to eliminate half my guesswork because this back sign is going to tell me whether the same or opposite. It's a plus, so they're the same. Now I have to determine are they both pluses or both minuses. This tells me they are both pluses. And now I'm going to split this into the front slots. x squared splits up as an x and an x. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find two numbers that will multiply for 12. And recall that since the signs are the same, they're going to multiply for 12, they're going to add for a 7. That's a 4 and a 3. Remember, I can check this by FOIL because x times x is as x squared. Out here, I'm going to get a 3x. In here, I'm going to get a 4x. And when I combine a 3x and a 4x, I do get that 7x in the middle. And then 4 times 3 is 12. But I have to be very careful because I can't just get back here. I have to get all the way back to the beginning. So this little 3 that I divided out in the beginning, he can't just disappear. He has to stay in the picture because I need to be able to get back to the beginning. So when I FOIL this, I get to here, distribute the 3, I do get back to the beginning. So here is my factored form. 3 times the quantity of x plus 4 times the quantity of x plus 3. And like we said before, it's okay to have the 3 here and the 4 here because I'll still have 4x and 3x gives me that 7x. So again, always do that common monomial factoring before you do anything else. So as I look at this one, I look at each of those terms and say, with a 2 and a 10 and a 48, is there something common that I can divide out of each one of those? Yes, I can divide 2 out of each one. Now I can, I can divide x's out here but not here, so 2 is the best that I can divide out. When I divide this by 2, I'm left with x squared. When I divide this by 2, I'm left with 5x. And when I divide this by 2, I'm left with a minus 24. Now, I'm going to look inside that parentheses. I'm going to say, is there anything more that I can divide out? x is out of here, but not here. And as far as the numbers go, those coefficients, nothing I can divide out. So I'm going to head for that double parentheses. And again, I'm going to eliminate half my guesswork with the signs. This back sign here tells me my signs are going to be opposites because it's a minus. One's a plus, one's a minus, and as we established before, if those signs need to be switched up, it'll be easy to switch. So I'm going to split this into the front slots as an x and an x, and now I want two numbers that are going to multiply for 24. This time they're going to subtract for a 5 because these signs are different. And when I check that foil out here, I'm going to get a negative something x, and here a positive something x. I'm going to combine those terms by subtraction. So I want two numbers that are going to multiply for 24. They're going to subtract for a 5. That's an 8 and a 3. 
So I'll put my 8 here and my 3 here, and I'll just double check. Remember, I don't have to do the full foil because I guarantee x times x is x squared. I guarantee 8 times negative 3 is a negative 24. That's how you chose those numbers. It's the outside here and the inside here that I'm worried about. Out here I get a negative 3x. In here I get a positive 8x. Those combine to be a positive 5x, which is exactly what I wanted. So I don't have to switch up the signs. Remember, if I would have had a negative 5x out of here, the easiest thing to do would be to switch these signs around. For instance, if this would have been the 3 and this would have been the 8, then I would have had a positive 3x and a negative 8x, and that would have given me a negative 5x. When I've got right number, wrong sign, right number, wrong sign, very easy to fix. Just switch the signs. I discussed before that technically you could switch the numbers, but later when this is no longer a 1, switching the numbers is going to make a complete mess. You won't have right number anymore. So right number, wrong sign means switch the signs. Now I've got my positive 8x and my negative 3x, which gives me the positive 5x that I wanted. But remember, this only gets me to here. I have to get back to the beginning, so that 2 that I divided out from the beginning needs to stay in there. So that now, foil this gets me to here. Distribute the 2 through gets me back to the beginning. This is the correct factored form. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple more, just to make sure we're very, very good at this. Notice that in these examples, I've got extra variables in there. Will extra variables mess up the process? Not at all. So what happens here is, notice that I'm still going to try to do that common monomial factoring before I do anything else. As I look at the 18 and the 9 and the 1, there's nothing common that I can divide out. Now I can divide z's out of here, but not here. X is out of here, but not here. So there's nothing common that I can divide out, which means I'm just going to go ahead and head for that double parentheses. Now remember, back here tells me whether my signs are same or opposites. It's a plus, so they're the same. Now I need to determine whether they're both pluses or both minuses. This middle sign tells me what they are. They're both pluses. So now I'm going to split this into the back slots. Now typically, this has a coefficient of 1, but the one that has a coefficient of 1 is back here. I will split this into these back slots. The only way to split up a z squared is as a z and a z. So that means now, in terms of foiling, out here I'll get a positive something z, in here a positive something z. What that indicates is these two are going to multiply for 18, and since these signs are the same, they're going to add for 9. What will multiply for 18 and add for 9? That's a 6 and a 3. So I'm going to split this up as a 6 and a 3, and I'm going to split up my x squared as an x and an x. Now this feels weird, and it feels like, oh my gosh, I must have something wrong. But if you check by FOIL, remember, 6x times 3x will give me that 18x squared that I wanted. z times z will give me the z squared that I wanted. Out here, 6x times z is going to give me a 6xz. And inside here, z times 3x will give me a 3xz. And when I combine a 6xz with a 3xz, I get a 9xz, which is exactly what I wanted. So this, in fact, is the correct way to factor it. So hopefully you're seeing that having extra variables really doesn't make a mess at all. It works itself out. So in this case, I'm going to do the very same thing then. And I'm going to say, well, first I'm going to look to see if there's something common that I can divide out because I always, 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 always do that first. I can divide A's and B's out of both of these, but not this one. And as far as the coefficients, 1, 1, 6, nothing that can happen there. So I'm headed for that double parentheses. And once again, this back sign is going to tell me that my signs are opposites. 1's a plus, 1's a minus. So now, I'm going to take this and split it into the front slots, being very careful because a squared splits up as an a and an a, b squared splits up as a b and a b. And notice that when I check that full foil, ab times ab will give me that a squared b squared. So I'm feeling okay right now. So these two are going to multiply for 6, and since these signs are different, they're going to subtract for a 1. Multiply for 6, subtract for 1, that's a 3 and a 2. So I'll put my 3 here and my 2 here. And remember, I don't have to check the full 4. AB times AB, I guarantee, is A squared B squared. Positive 3 times negative 2, I guarantee, is a negative 6. It's out here and in here that I'm worried about. Out here, I get a negative 2AB. And in here, I get a positive 3AB. 
When I combine those two, I do in fact get that positive 1AB that I wanted. Remember, if I would get right number wrong sign, in other words, if this was a minus AB because this was a minus 3 and that's a positive 2, that would give me a positive 2AB and a minus 3AB. That would give me a negative AB. Right number wrong sign means switch signs. That would become the plus, this would become the minus, and that would give me exactly what I wanted, and so I know that this is correct. All right, one more. So we've got our x to the third y minus 2x squared y squared minus 3xy to the third. And once again, I'm going to always, 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 always look first to see if there's something common I can divide out before I do anything else. I can take x's out of here, here, oh, and here. Okay, I can take x's out. I can take a y out of here, here, and here. Okay, I can take a y out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the biggest that I can possibly take out. I can't take any more out than an x to the first here, and I can't take any more out than a y to the first here. So an xy is the best that I can divide out. Now, when I divide the xy out of here, when I divide x to the third by x, I get an x squared, and these y's will cancel out. Here, x squared divided by x is an x, and y squared divided by y is just a y. Now here, x divided by x is 1, and y to the third divided by y is y squared. So I have factored out as much as I possibly can as far as common monomial factoring goes, because notice with these, I can still take x's out of here, but not here. I can still take y's out of here, but not here. So I've done all the common monomial factoring that I possibly can. I'm headed for that double parentheses. And here again, back sign's going to tell me whether the same or opposites. It's a minus, so my signs are different. So I'm going to split this into the front slots. The only way to split an x squared is an x and an x. I'm going to split this into the back slots. Now the y squared splits up as a y and a y, but the 3 only splits up as a 3 and a 1. So that 3 and the 1 are going to multiply for 3. They're going to subtract for a 2. And now I'm going to check my outsides and insides. Out here I get a negative xy. In here I get a positive 3xy. And a negative xy plus 3xy gives me a positive 2xy. I have the right number, wrong sign, and again, very easy to fix. Let's just switch up those signs. So now I get that positive xy, negative 3xy, giving me the negative 2xy that I wanted. This is right, but remember, this will only take me to here. I want to get all the way back to the beginning, so that xy that I divided out, I need to keep it in there. Recall, I don't necessarily have to show this coefficient of 1. I can just write it as a y, and that's perfectly fine. But if you have the 1 coefficient in there, there's nothing wrong with it. So hopefully that helps you to see that when it comes to factoring trinomials, yes, head for that double parentheses, but only after you have factored out that common factor, that GCF. Once you factor the GCF out, then head for that double parentheses. And hopefully you're noticing that if you have extra variables, they're going to work themselves out. Back sign tells you whether the same or opposites, and if you find out that they are the same, the middle sign will tell you what they are. I hope it helps. Have a great day.